Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2. This is lecture number 35 and I am Bezat Ozavi. Today we will uh, go over some examples of voltage voltage feedback, a topology that we studied last time, and uh, try to become comfortable with various circuit implementations that employ voltage voltage feedback. And then we'll also look at an application example where we see that uh, this is actually used in some interesting and useful cases. All right, uh, before going there, let's just uh, review what we covered last time. We uh, talked about four feedback topologies, and we started with uh, voltage voltage feedback, meaning a circuit that uh, uh, measures the output voltage by the feedback network, senses it, and then returns uh, a voltage to the input. So we are measuring the output in parallel, we are returning the vo voltage in series because these two have to add up to this quantity. And then we analyzed this in the general case and we found out that the closed loop voltage gain, this voltage divided by this voltage, is uh, equal to the open loop gain divided by 1 plus the loop gain, as we have we've seen a number of times. But also we discovered that the input impedance of this whole circuit is equal to the input impedance of the original amplifier, the open loop amplifier, multiplied by 1 plus the loop gain. So as a result of negative feedback, we have raised the input impedance by a factor of 1 plus Ka, A1, and that's a good thing because now this new circuit is a better voltage sensor, better voltage amplifier, because its input, input impedance is higher. Similarly, for the output impedance, we saw that uh, after we apply feedback, the output impedance is the open loop output impedance, meaning that of this amplifier itself, divided by 1 plus the loop gain. And we see that the output impedance has gone down, so the circuit becomes a better voltage source. It can deliver a voltage with a lower output resistance. So we see that we have these benefits. We are sacrificing gain, but we are benefiting from a higher input impedance, a lower output impedance, and of course higher linearity and everything else. Okay, so uh, let's go over some examples. Last time I uh, showed you this example as an implementation of voltage-voltage feedback. So we said uh, we can always start from here and observe that this V out is measured between here and ground, right? So I can measure this voltage in parallel by means of this resistive divider, like so, right, in parallel. So R1 and R2, see that these are connected and these are connected, so they're in parallel. Then I return a voltage, which you might call U, and I want this voltage and this voltage source and this input to be in series, right? So that's my input voltage source. And then this goes in series, right? So this is, of course, the standard in non-inverting amplifier we have studied in electronics one, but now we discover that it is actually a voltage-voltage feedback topology, meaning we are sensing the voltage at the output and we are returning a voltage to the input. Okay, so uh, the voltage gain, of course, is uh, not the original voltage gain anymore. If this amplifier has a gain of A1, we can see that the closed loop gain will be A1 divided by 1 plus K times A1, as we've seen before. But also the input and output impedances have changed. Okay, so as we saw last time and previous times, I can say Let's build a very simple amplifier that has two inputs and one output, right? Can I do that? Sure. I can just take a single transistor, bipolar or MOS, and call these two, these two, right? Because we know that this current, this MOS signal current is proportional to this voltage minus this voltage, right? GM times VGS. So, uh, then, from here to here, I can say that's my A1. 
Now I'm going to apply a voltage divider here to this output and then return this fraction back to the input so that just goes back here and that is my input voltage source. So if I call this U, so R1, R2, you can see that this U is this U, uh, this circuit is this circuit, and this V in is this V in, right? So that is indeed a voltage voltage feedback circuit. Okay, so what happens to the input resistance of this circuit? Well, we said that the input resistance should go up by 1 plus the loop gain. Now, for simplicity, we're going to assume that R1 plus R2 is very large. Okay, it, meaning it's really much larger, much greater than RD. And then we also neglect channel length modulation. Okay, so to make things, keep things simple. All right, we have found the loop gain of the circuit before. Remember, we said that, for example, I can cut the loop from here and I travel this way, then the loop gain is gm times rd, or minus gm times rd, and then we have a voltage divider, so minus gm times rd times r2 over r1 plus r2, right? That was the loop gain. So we found before that ka1 was equal to uh, gm rd, times R2 over R1 plus R2. This is true, this equation is true, if R1 and R2 do not draw much current from here, right? So we're assuming they're very large, so they don't draw any current. They just sense this voltage and divide it down. Okay, so that's what we found before. And I just uh, use these equations. So I say that the open loop Input resistance, sorry, oh, closed loop input resistance. So closed loop input resistance, closed loop input impedance or resistance is equal to, all right, so it has to be R in times 1 plus Ka1. How much is R in? Remember, R in is uh, the impedance of the input impedance of this amplifier, the standalone amplifier, before we apply feedback around it. Right, that's what we call R in. So, how do I find R in here? Well, I have to identify the open loop circuit. So, the open loop circuit is like this, right? This is the amplifier with two inputs. So, the input impedance seen here is we are looking to the source of a MOS transistor with this gate at AC ground, and no channel length modulation, so that would be 1 over GM, right? So the input resistance of the circuit is a common gate stage, is 1 over GM. That is the open loop input resistance, multiplied by 1 plus Ka1, so 1 plus the loop gain, 1 plus GM RD R2 over R1 plus R2. Okay? So you see that we heavily rely on what we learn in electronics 1 in terms of quickly calculating the voltage gain, input impedance, output impedance, and these things, right? So again, uh, I want to refresh your memory that for a common gate device, if this is AC ground and we're looking into here, we see 1 over GM, right? That's what I'm using for this equation. So the key point here is that uh, with these equations that we know now, we can readily look at a circuit, identify it as one of these four feedback topologies, and then quickly find its closed loop gain, its closed loop input impedance, and its closed loop output impedance, right? We don't need to take the circuit and write a whole bunch of KVLs and KCLs to solve it. We can do that. Of course, we are making some approximations, right? This approximation and this approximation. Now, they may not be very valid. It's okay. They give us some feel for what to expect. 
All right. Uh, the next task is to find the closed loop output impedance, right? So closed loop output impedance. Okay, so we said it's the open loop output impedance divided by 1 plus the loop gain. So let's write the 1 plus the loop gain expression because that's easy. GMRD R2 over R1 plus R2. And how much is the open loop output resistance of the amplifier? So again, this is the standalone amplifier, the open loop amplifier or the feed forward amplifier, however you want to call it. So that's this guy here, right? This is the standalone amplifier. I will circle it in black and say this is A1, right? A1 with two inputs. Okay, so uh, how much is the output resistance of the circuit? It's RD because we are neglecting channel length modulation. So it's just RD divided by 1 plus the loop gain. So that is the output resistance of the circuit. Okay, so uh, as long as we can identify a given circuit topology and match it to, for example, voltage-voltage feedback, then it's easy to write these equations, right? Okay, let's go to another example. And... Uh, this time I will consider even a simpler case. Uh, let's take this amplifier again. Call this M1 RD. And uh, I will pass this through a source follower. M2. And then I'll just return this right into this point. And here's my input, V in. Okay, so let's take a moment to understand what's happened here. Uh, first of all, where is A1? The main amplifier, the feedforward amplifier. Well, A1, it starts from the common gate stage but also now it includes an emitter follower, and that's fine, right? So A1 is really this whole thing. Okay, so what are we doing exactly? We are taking the output of A1 and returning it to one of its inputs directly without a resistive divider. Is that something we are familiar with? Sure, that is actually what we called a unity gain buffer in electronics one. Right, that's this, this is A1, and I'm returning all of the output back to the input. So K is equal to one. K is equal to one because we did not attenuate this output voltage, so this is our output voltage here. We did not attenuate it by anything. We just returned all of it to the input, right? So it's a unity gain buffer. So that's fine. We should be able to handle that. K is 1. That's fine, right? We should be able to handle that. Okay, so as a quiz, I want you to find uh, the input impedance. By that, I mean the closed loop input impedance. I'll give you one minute to think about it.
Okay, so what did you get for the closed loop input impedance? All right, well, we have uh, the closed loop input impedance is equal to, according to this equation, so we have, we have to find the input resistance before we close the loop, the open loop input resistance. Okay, we're looking to the source of a common gate state, that's the 1 over GM, so that's 1 over GM1, and then 1 plus KA1. How much is that? 1 plus K is 1, so 1 plus A1. And how much is A1? A1 is the voltage gain of this circuit in the black circle. How much is the voltage gain of the circuit in the black circle? Well, if we assume lambda is 0, then the source follower has a gain of 1, and this circuit has a gain of Gm times Rd, Gm1 times Rd, so this comes out to be 1 over Gm1 times 1 plus Gm1 Rd. Right? We have a common gate stage followed by a source follower. That's our open loop amplifier. The source follower has a gain of 1. The common gate stage has a gain of Gm1 times Rd. So that's the result. Okay, very simple. Um, all right, so you can see that the closed loop input impedance has gone up by 1 plus the loop gain, as expected. All right, uh, let's go and find the closed loop uh, output impedance, because that's more interesting actually in this case. <clears throat> all right, so uh, we really saw that it is the open loop output resistance divided by 1 plus the loop gain. Okay, how much is the open loop output resistance of the circuit in the black box? All right, so let's draw that here because we have to be careful. Here's our source follower and here's our common gate stage, right? And we're trying to find this output resistance. That's what we call the open loop output resistance. To find this, every other uh, independent source is set to zero. This is set to zero. This is set to zero, right? So how much is that? Just, just the 1 over GM of the transistor. We are looking into the source of a MOS device. Uh, so with lambda equals zero, so this would be 1 over GM2. So that's sort of a low value, right? Output resistance of a source follower. But as a result of feedback, we are bringing it even lower. So now this gets divided by 1 plus the loop gain. So it's 1 over GM2, and then divided by 1 plus GM1 RD. Right, so this will be a quite a low output impedance, which is a good thing as far as a voltage amplifier is concerned. All right, so uh, these were some properties of the circuit. Okay, uh, let's move on to another example. Let's see if I have anything else here. Okay, uh, we are going to look at a, an application example. So let's go to the next page and see what we have here. All right, so application example. As you can see, we are spending a great deal of time on voltage-voltage feedback. And this is for two reasons. Number one, uh, this is because Voltage-voltage feedback is very common. Maybe 50-60% of circuits that have feedback fall into this category. And number two, whatever we learn in analyzing feedback, voltage-voltage uh, feedback will help us with other topologies as well. So that's why we are taking our time and going through these different examples, just trying to make sure that we can look at it from different perspectives and understand the properties. All right, so here is a simple ab application. Uh, let's suppose that I have 
uh, an amplifier and it has some output resistance. So I'm modeling it like this, R out 1. Okay, and uh, then I have a speaker here. So we're trying to build an audio amplifier, okay? Audio amplifier. This speaker has an impedance of 8 ohms. All right. Now, uh, this resistance is pretty high, so this could be, for example, a common emitter amplifier or something, right? So this could be some hundreds of ohms, maybe 500 ohms, 1 kilo ohm. So we can't just connect this directly from here to here because we will see serious attenuation of the signal, right? Okay, so uh, what we can do is try to put, for example, an emitter follower between these two. This is something we saw in Electronics 1. We saw that an emitter follower is a good buffer in that it uh, has a low output impedance and a high input impedance. So at the input, it's not loading the preceding stage, and at the output, it can drive this 8 ohms with not too much attenuation of the signal. Okay, sure, we can do that, but is that really good enough? So let's work out some numbers. Let's suppose that this uh, resistance is 1 kilo ohm, okay? And what do we see looking this way? If you remember, uh, the uh, emitter follower takes the source impedance, divides it by beta plus 1, and then adds its own 1 over gm. So what we see here is R out 1 divided by beta plus 1 plus 1 over gm of this transistor. That's what we see looking at the emitter of an emitter follower as we saw in electronics 1. Okay, is that good enough? Well, not really, because if beta is, for example, 100, uh, 1,000 ohms divided by 100 gives us 10 ohms. This is already 10 ohms, and this is something on top of that. So if the output distance here is 10 ohms, and this is 8 ohms, we definitely attenuate the signal significantly, right? So that's not very useful. Okay, so here's the problem, right? We have an amplifier, an emitter follower, we try to drive it, an 8 ohm speaker, and the output impedance is still too high. So what can I do? I'm trying to deliver a voltage to a speaker, but my output impedance is too high. Well, remember that if we have voltage feedback, meaning if we try to sense this voltage and return it, the output impedance goes down. So maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should try to apply feedback around this whole thing so that the output distance goes down. Okay, so how do I do that? Here's how it goes. So, we will, uh, so in other words, if I draw another bigger box around this whole thing, then this output resistance is for this red box, right? The red amplifier has an output resistance given by this, which is too much. So now I'm going to build a feedback loop around it. And uh, let's do it like this. Okay, so here's our amplifier, uh, emitter follower. And it wants to drive this speaker. And the problem is that this is only 8 ohms. All right. So I will use an amplifier here, maybe an op amp, and I will feed back from this point. So this could be an input signal. This is the audio signal coming to the circuit. And this is the output signal going into the speaker. All right. So uh, why is this better than this circuit? Well, this circuit did not have feedback. So the output impedance was this, right? Now I have that output impedance, which was the open loop output impedance and then it will get divided by 1 plus the loop gain. That's what we got from 
voltage feedback, meaning sensing a voltage and returning, a vo vo sensing a voltage here, right? That's how we reduce the output uh, impedance. So I can say that this new output impedance, so I can say closed loop output impedance is equal to the open loop output impedance, whatever I had before I applied this feedback, divided by 1 plus the loop gain, right? 1 plus k, uh, 1 plus, I will just add loop gain for now, and then we'll see what goes in here. So I will just say open loop output impedance divided by loop gain, right? I'm just repeating that equation in words. Now we'll go ahead and find how much this is from the circuit, find how much this is from the circuit, and plug it in here. Okay, well, uh, let's suppose that this amplifier, when I buy it, it, has a certain output resistance. So this amplifier has something like that, right? R out one. So then the open loop output resistance, meaning the resistance that we see here before this feedback is made, Looks like this, right? You have an amplifier driving a minimum follower. That's the output resistance. So the open loop output resistance is R out 1 uh, div uh, divided by beta plus 1. Okay, that uh, needs some cleaning. So, <clears throat> so we have R out 1 divided by beta plus 1 plus 1 over gm of this transistor plus 1 over gm that is the open loop output impedance right if we just disconnect this wire and we sit and look here that was that's what we calculated before and then how much is the loop gain the loop gain says if i travel from here go around and come back how much is the voltage gain so let me try to do that. Let me try to just cut this wire a little bit and then change the color. Put a voltage source here. V test. And then call this VF. Right? That will give me the loop gain. So, of course, for that, this has to be set to zero. Uh, so, how much is the loop gain? V test goes into this amplifier. Let's say this amplifier has some voltage gain. We'll call it A0. So V test times minus A0 comes out here. The emitter follower has a voltage gain of about 1. Maybe, maybe not. But let's say the voltage gain of the emitter follower is 1. So it's not quite accurate here, but don't worry about it. So voltage gain of uh, emitter follower about one then I'll write here not really okay because it's not exactly true but uh, just as a simplifying assumption okay so we have a gain of a zero we have a gain of about one so by the time we come back here the total loop gain is just A0 times 1, approximately, right? So then that would be just 1 plus A0. In this case, K is 1 because we took the entire voltage and returned it, right? We didn't have any attenuation of the out before coming back to the input. So K is 1. So that is the overall output impedance of the closed loop configuration, the circuit, right, when this is closed. And you can see that it can be substantially lower than the original open loop output impedance. And that's good for driving the speaker, right? So for example, if A0 is 100, if this op amp has a gain of 100, then uh, we had one kilo ohm divided by 110 ohms plus some amount, and this whole thing is now divided by another factor of 100. So it can be much smaller than eight ohms so that we can drive the speaker without significant signal attenuation. All right, so this is an example of how we build 
an audio amplifier to be able to drive these low impedance speakers. Okay, so um, while you're on this subject, I think it's good to share with you another perspective, which is also useful. Do you remember that when we started talking about negative feedback, we said a well-designed negative feedback system wants to make the feedback signal a good copy of the input signal, right? a good replica of the input signal. So we had X, we had U, and we saw that X and U are very close to each other. So what's going on here? Can we have the same idea? So here's what we have. We have a well-designed negative feedback system some gain here and our input is here so let's say our input looks like this right and what this loop wants to do is to make sure that this feedback signal which is u but it's also the output voltage because k is one right so it wants to make sure that u is a good copy of this signal and that means that v out is also a good copy of this signal right so so if i v in is like this then u would be like this so that's v out right so this loop always tries to do this now if we don't have a speaker connected to here the loop says yes i want to make sure that this output is a good copy of this input right so whatever happens as this input goes up and down this up and does certain things this goes up and down in some manner such that this is always a good copy of that. Now we come along and load this heavily with only 8 ohms, the speaker, right? The speaker. And the circuit says, well, I still need to make sure that U is a good copy of V in. So it is true that this 8 ohms is a very low impedance. And it's true that I could experience attenuation. But with the amount of loop gain that I have, I would like to make sure that this is a good copy of that. So you can see that when we talked about desensitization, we see that the circuit provides a nice a copy of the input at the output, regardless of how much load resistance we attach to it. You attach 1 kilo ohm, you attach 500 ohms, you attach 8 ohms, this output voltage is very close to input voltage, right? So that's uh, the property of a negative feedback system. Okay, moving on to another example. Uh, let's see. So, how do we implement the op amp in the previous example. So we are building this uh, audio amplifier and we decided to place it in a feedback loop. We have an emitter follower, we need an op amp, right? And I would like to build this op amp out of transistors. So how do I do it? I need some moderate gain, maybe 50, maybe 100, something like that, right? Okay, well, so we're looking for a circuit that has two inputs and one output, and it has a relatively high gain. All right, so we have to go back to the circuit topologies that we have studied in this course and see which one of those can satisfy this need. We have two inputs, one output, and a relatively high gain, maybe 50, maybe 100. So what can we do? Well, here's an example. If you remember, we called this the differential pair with active load, right? And then we found the voltage gain of the circuit after some analysis. We have two inputs and one output, right? This was a single-ended output. And the purpose of this current meter was to give us 
the, the gain back because we're not taking the output from both sides, we're taking the output only from one side. That's what we analyzed before. And we saw that the voltage gain of the circuit is approximately given by, so this would be A0, the open loop voltage gain is approximately equal to GM of the NMOS or NPN device times RO of the NPN device in parallel with RO of the PNP device, right? And with bipolar transistors, this can be some tens, maybe 50 or something. It can be pretty reasonable. Okay, so let's try to build this circuit or that circuit using this op amp. Okay, so we have two inputs. One input senses V in. Uh, we go through an emitter follower. So we go through an emitter follower. And then we take the output and return it to the other input of the amplifier. So we turn this right here. And then this is ready to drive the speaker, right? So we might call this Q5. Okay, so that's one implementation that we can readily create using simple bipolar transistors. Okay, so are we sure that the feedback around this loop is positive, uh, negative? We want negative feedback, right? So let's just quickly check. How do I check? Well, it's not that hard. If you remember, we said that we break the loop somewhere. So I'm going to make a little break here. And I said, I apply a voltage to this side. And for example, that voltage goes up. So this voltage goes up over here. Now I have to trace this around the loop and see what comes back. This voltage goes up. What happens to this voltage? Q2 looks like a, a common emitter stage because the signal goes to the base of Q2 and comes out of the collector of Q2, right? There's some stuff going on here. Don't worry about it too much, right? Uh, for this test, of course, the input is set to zero, so this is not changing. So it's, it's like finding the loop gain, right? So this input goes up. Uh, the base of Q2 is going up. The emitter is probably not changing. It doesn't really matter the here. The collector will go down, right? Like a simple common emitter stage. This goes down. The base of an emitter follower goes down, so the output also goes down, right? So we see that in response to an increase, the feedback loop brought a decrease. This uh, wants to fight this one, so the feedback is negative, so everything is good. Okay, uh, very well. Let's uh, talk about another example. Um, let's see. So, Let's go to slide number six here. <clears throat> uh, can we use a transistor in the feedback network? Now, we saw one example of this uh, a couple of lectures ago where we had uh, we were bringing a current back to the input and I used a um, transistor. But let's look at some other example in the context of voltage, voltage feedback. All right, okay, so let's build a little amplifier first. Here's our little amplifier. And, uh, okay, so this is the input, this is the output. I'm building a two-stage amplifier, right? Q1, Q2, RC1, and RC2. So far, so good, right? Okay. And uh, now, I will attenuate the output by a resistive divider, because I'm looking for a K 
that is less than 1, I want to return only a fraction. Now, we saw before that I could connect this point to this point, and that would be voltage voltage feedback because this is U, right? This is V in, and this is the, these are the two inputs of the amplifier. So if you just connect this to here, that becomes a voltage voltage feedback circuit. In previous examples, this transfer was the other way. The input went to the emitter or the source. Now it's this way. It's the same principle. Okay, so let me do that and make sure that we understand. So this is a voltage voltage feedback, right? Well, but can I use a transistor inside this network? Uh, the question is why and how, right? Uh, well, maybe, yes, maybe there's a good reason to do that. Okay, well, uh, we can see a sort of a problem in this topology. Remember that I said we assume R1 plus R2 is very large, right? Uh, for the approximations that we are making. And after all, we said that this feedback network wants to sense a voltage so its input impedance has to be very high. That's, that's a good voltage sensor. But at the same time, this feedback network wants to return a voltage. If it wants to return a voltage, its output impedance has to be low, because then it's a good voltage source. But the, now I have a conflict, right? Because if I pick R1 and R2 to be large, to favor this, it won't be good for this port, because the output distance will be too high, and vice versa. So if... R1 plus R2 is large, then good for sensing the out, but bad for returning U, right? U is this voltage here, right? because now the output impedance is too high. Okay, so maybe I can play a circuit trick to alleviate the situation. And my circuit trick is like this. I'm going to draw that very quickly. And uh, here's what we're gonna do. So here's our divider. And here's the input. This is U. I will use a animator follower right here. What does an emitter follower do? An emitter follower reduces the output impedance, right? So R1 and R2 can still be high, good for sensing this V out, right? But now the output distance that we see here is lower, right? Because then it's the output distance of an emitter follower, which is, uh, let's call this QF, is equal to 1 over GM of this transistor, this transistor, I call it 1 over GMF, plus uh, this resistance divided by beta plus 1, right? So the resistance that we see looking this way, uh, again, without going through details, would be R1 in parallel with R2, approximately, divided by beta plus 1. Okay, you might be asking, why is it R1 in parallel with R2, not in series, don't worry about those details, okay? I'm just saying that I could insert an emitter follower in this feedback loop so that the output impedance that I see here is not as much as these, right? It will be lower. And that's good because we would like the feedback network to produce a voltage with a low output impedance. That would be a good voltage source. So we can do that. So here's an example of a circuit that uses a transistor, an active device, in the feedback network. Okay? The analysis doesn't change. We are still following whatever we learned before. Right? We said uh, that the amplifiers, uh, the, clo the closed loop gain is the open loop gain divided by one plus the loop gain, and so on. Right? It's the same thing. <coughs> Except that the feedback net network now includes a transistor. Okay, so the picture that I have 
portrait so far says that actually k is this whole thing up to here, right? This is k. Right? That's how we uh, thought of it. That's how we developed it. Uh, but um, a point of curiosity is why not say that k is still over here. This is k. And why don't we say that this whole thing is a1. It has two inputs. It has one output. Right? That's perfectly legitimate. Right? We always have an op amp with two inputs. Well, here's a sort of an op amp with two inputs and one output. So that gives us an interesting perspective. We can think of this emitter follower as part of the feedback network belonging to K, or we can think of it as part of the feed forward amplifier, the main amplifier, part of A1, if we draw it like this. So next time we'll come back to this point and play with it a little more. I will see you next time.